Hey, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. and today I'm reviewing Horizon Zero Dawn from Steam Forge Games. Horizon Zero Dawn is a 1 to 4 player semi cooperative experience with a cooperative variant coming from Steam Forge Games that is, well, it's been out for quite some time. And the reason I'm doing this review now is actually because they're going to have their Horizon Zero Dawn Forbidden West coming out shortly. And I've had this in my collection for long enough that I figured I'm long overdue for a review. So, Horizon Zero Dawn. Let's talk about this. Let's talk about the things I like, don't like, all that stuff. I'll try to link down below as well to Horizon Zero Dawn Forbidden West so you can check out whatever's coming up next. I will say I am excited about Forbidden West despite being much more mixed on Horizon Zero Dawn, the original game. To that end, what is this game? Well, it's based on the video game. It's based on the very, fairly popular Horizon Zero Dawn video game series. And in the game, you're going to be controlling various uh, hunters or seekers. I'm not entirely sure what they're actually called as they wander around the board, trying to engage with the various pathways of the creatures on the board, ultimately trying to hunt down a final creature. In the game, you're going to take on a, uh, a great hunt. Uh, the hunter's call or whatnot. You're going to be hunting a specific creature and going through a sequence of hunts in order to get to them. Now, the base game, Horizon Zero Dawn, only comes with one to go ahead and hunt down. But as you go ahead and get expansions, you'll have more to go on these other more varied hunts. Now, in that game, to that end, you're going to go on five hunts. One, two, three, four, and then the final, final hunt that you're going along, powering up and leveling up along the way. To that end, you're going to have this deck over here, which you're going to have players drawing cards from this deck in order to choose which hunt they're going on, or choose which of these cards and pathways that you're going to set up and then go ahead and engage with that hunt. And they're going to get progressively more difficult as you go through these. And at the end of each hunt, you're going to go ahead and level up your character so that you are able to take on the final creature. You're going to level them up by moving your token down this little chart over here, unlocking various perks unique to your character, but also going through market decks. There's going to be di different levels of market decks, all giving you more and more things, better weapons, better armor, better gear, better modifications, better ammo, better all these different things that will help you take down the final boss. The problem is, you're not necessarily on the same team in this game. See, in Horizon Zero Dawn, the base game mode is a, is a semi-cooperative experience, where players are going to earn glory for taking down these creatures, and so as you look at one of these creatures on the board, and you take a look at their armor and their 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 health, and all the ways to slowly take down these uh, robot creatures in the game, you're going to have someone who's eventually striking the final blow. And that player will get the scrap, they will get the glory, they will get the rewards for finally taking down that creature, and so this game is both a survival game, which you have to be mindful that these enemies, if you attack them too quickly, if you attack them with too them too much warning, you will be left, well, possibly getting hurt. Possibly getting hurt in the game. You might get hurt in the game. You see, the creatures are on their own individual path, slowly moving around the board as time moves on, possibly wandering off the map, which could have the effect of having you being unable to complete the scenario if enough creatures wander off the board that you're not able to get enough points in the game to be able to progress to the next level. But along the way, those creatures are currently just kind of innocent. They're doing their own thing. You can spend actions to distract, to attack, to move, to sneak, all these different things in the game. But you have to be mindful that as you start to attack them or enter into their awareness, you're going to have them pop up suddenly a lot more alert. And that means a few things. First of all, it means they're attacking you a lot harder instead of just wandering along their paths. It also means you're going to have to be mindful of their armor, their effects, all these things as they go through the game. You see, the, the characters are simply going to move along the board when they have a chance, unless they are alert, at which point they're going to look at their behavior card. And that's why you have interesting, interesting enemies to fight against. So for example, this watcher over here, small that he might be, if you ever make him alert, he's going to go ahead to the other characters and make them alert as well. His goal is specifically to set up the other creatures so that they know you're there. Which means the creatures are not that hard to defeat. But you do want to spend a little bit of time navigating around how to take them out and how to ensure that you don't make them alert when it's not situationally beneficial to do so. But again, that's where we get to the problem where this is a semi-cooperative experience. You are constantly trying to not just stay alive and not just win, but you're trying to be the person striking the last blow to maximize the glory that you're getting because there are catching mechanics in the game to an extent. You're going to have the person in the last place drawing these various cards that are going to give you different benefits across the subsequent missions you're going on in order to give the player in last place a small benefit, a small boon that will help them either in the game, getting glory, something else that will give them a, a perk, a leg up, so to speak. But you're still going through this progression, trying to be the player who has the most glory by the end of the mission by the end of the sequence of missions that you go on. That's basically what Horizon Zero Dawn is. It's a little bit of a stealth-based system because you are being mindful of creatures that are on a uh, patrol path and trying to figure out when the right opportunity to mess with their patrol path is. It's a semi-cooperative experience in the sense that you are trying to work together to take down these enemies, but you ultimately do want to be the person who's striking that final blow. And it does have a cooperative mode as well. It has a cooperative mode which allows for less faints in the game. When your character dies effectively, they're, they're known as fainting. They, they fall down and you have to be mindful that too many feints can trigger the end of the scenario. 
but in the cooperative experience, a single feint will trigger the end of the scenario, so it's a little bit more punishing in that sense. The flip side is that chase and hunt for glory is gone. Instead, you are simply trying to take down these creatures, work together, strike the final blow, and make sure that you stay alive at the end of it, or you all collectively stay alive at the end of it. And so the cooperative mode gives you a drop of difficulty uh, enhancement to account for the fact that you're not all working together, but ultimately ends up being a much easier experience. And now that I'm drifting into opinions, let's go ahead and talk about my opinions and thoughts and review of this game. So, what do I like, not like, and can see others not liking? Starting off with what I like, which is there's a lot of things in Horizon Zero Dawn that are very compelling. This is a game that I have gone through several times now. I'm constantly hoping to dive into expansions. Please note this review is I have not gone through the expansions in this review. I was always pushed off reviewing it because I wanted to play as the expansions and go on more hunts and, and, and fight that giant wing thingy, which I don't even know its name, but it looks super cool to go ahead and fight against. And so there were a lot of these other things that I wanted to engage with that I haven't had a chance to do so. But base game wise, you're going to be given a bunch of hunters. You're going to be given a bunch of enemies. You're going to be given that great hunt against the uh, rock stride, I believe, the, the I can't remember the exact name of this creature, but you're going to be trying to go ahead and take them down slowly but surely. And base game wise, you're going to have a lot of things that are giving you variety to the experience, even within the base game, which doesn't have as much variety in the enemies that you're hunting down. But the biggest thing I'd like is the enhancement of upgrading your characters across the course of the journey. Because you are going to be doing that both in your own personal progression, which gives you a tiered chart of how to move a token down, getting a variety of benefits, and there's a bunch of different ways you can combine the different traits and bonuses and weapons and cards you'll add to your deck that give you your own unique way you can develop your character. And you combine that with these fairly large market decks of three different levels that give you an absolute ton of gear of different things you can go ahead and ha add, enhancements, upgrades to your, upgrades to your armor, upgrades to your weapons, different weapons, all these different things in the game, there's a lot of stuff to upgrade across the course of the experience, giving you ways to just feel more powerful as you go, and you will slowly but surely need to feel more powerful depending on what game mode you're playing as, but especially if you're playing in a competitive game mode, a semi-cooperative game mode, you will want to upgrade yourself so you can be the one who's more frequently striking that final shot, so you can have more upgrade cards in your hand that help modify what you're doing, or help land that critical hit as you go through the experience. So overall, the upgrading of your characters, the progressional hunt, all those are things that keep you in, involved in the game. The fact that you are going on a sequence of missions to start off a little easy and get progressively harder across those cards as you are trying to be mindful and balancing across the various enemies and how they operate. And I like, in general, I like stealth-based systems in many games, and I like it here as well, in the sense that you are constantly trying to be on your toes as far as what you do and when you get in the way of the enemy's path. And that's something that I generally enjoy, that modification aspect of, sure, I can go ahead and wander here and start attacking. The problem is, I'm going to have to go ahead and wander into that zone, which means this guy over here is going to have to be mindful, which means maybe I want to not actually wander up and attack. Maybe instead I want to distract him, pulling him one closer, and then wander and attack, because that way he won't be alert at the start of the enemy step, and I actually have a chance of trying to make it out. But meanwhile, this person's wandering over here, and I have to be mindful that at the end of this person's turn, he's also going to wander right here, and then he'll see me, and then he'll be alert, and then he'll move here, and suddenly you'll have three alert enemies on the board. Trying to think through those those choices, those decisions, I like that in most stealth-based most stealth games, and I like it in Horizon of Zero Dawn as well, because you have to be mindful and think through how the battlefield will evolve as you go through this. And it's worth noting that lower player counts have a bit more control over that because of the fact that less turns are happening in between each turn. It gets harder and harder to control for any of that at higher player counts. At three and four players, it's a little trickier to actually be, be sure that you're staying on top of how the characters are going to move and how they're not going to necessarily wind up in your path. I find two players is a good balance of having to plan around those turns while giving you enough control and agency to be able to plan around those turns. And so overall, the main things I appreciate about Horizon Zero Dawn are just the general tactical nature of the stealth aspect, with as well as the way you enhance and upgrade your character, from every character having their own unique upgrade deck, and then having three large market decks to go through as well. As far as things I don't like in the game, there's two things I'd say, but one really being the defining aspect of all the problems I have with Horizon Zero Dawn. The first thing, the smaller thing, is that there's not enough stealth mitigation in the game, in my opinion. There's kind of just distract. Distract is the main thing. You can go ahead and try to pull an enemy a bit closer to you, assuming they're unaware as you throw a rock, they go to investigate it, and then before you know it, you pop into the square and you start attacking them. That's the main tool you have at your disposal to be mindful and to mitigate around the battlefield, which means for to a large extent that while I appreciate the stealth aspects that Horizon Zero Dawn gives you, I don't think it gives you enough stealth aspects to be for the type of game it's trying to be, I wish there was more of a stealth-based component, stronger and more powerful enemies, and more things to be mindful and scared of as you interrupted them, but more ways to mitigate and work with their path as you go through the game. I find that Horizon Zero Dawn kind of gives me the taste of a stealth-based game, but that's a taste that's not fully developed. It's a taste where I get a lot more out of other game systems that are stealth-based instead. That's more of a small nitpick, though. I'd say for me, the biggest complaint against Horizon Zero Dawn is ultimately, to me, 
the core game modes don't work for me. Which is a fairly, fairly big complaint against a game that I otherwise do enjoy. See, I enjoy, I enjoy Resident Evil Dawn, and I've played it both semi-cooperative and I've played it cooperative as well. And the reason I've tried it both ways is because the semi-cooperative mode works to an extent, but to me also doesn't. It has a few complaints that I just don't like in semi-cooperative experiences, and that's true for Resident Evil Dawn as well. And so I tried the cooperative mode, hoping that would fix my problems, but the cooperative mode is just way too easy. Like, ridiculously easy. It is... It is way too easy. To me, the cooperative mode does not present the challenge. It represents the taste of a system that I want more from. This is why I said earlier that I'm excited for Horizon Zero Dawn Forbidden West, while also thinking that Horizon Zero Dawn gives me the taste of a game that I like, while also being a bit more, well, not where I want it to be. You see, for me, the semi-cooperative mode has a few classic problems that are present in semi-cooperative mode. The first thing, ultimately, is that a player who's not doing well can tank the experience. It's literally baked into the rules that you can tank the experience. You can have a player who sits there and says, I don't want to end the encounter. Why? Because I think that if I keep going, maybe you'll die, and this way, I'm not winning anyway, so I may as well hurt you. There are many rules that are baked into the experience that just make it so that a semi-cooperative game can absolutely have you dragging hunters, dragging enemies into other spaces, so you can, I mean, especially in a three or four player game, you can have players who just pull creatures into other hunters' space so they can just attack and attack and attack. If you're not trying to preserve the, the sense of survival as a community, if you're not trying for that, this game can absolutely be a punishing experience and can end up with the whole, hey, I'm I'm not winning right now, so I may as well have all of us faint, because what do I care? This game has that basic core problem that is present in most semi-cooperative experiences, and Horizon Zero Dawn has it too. And that part I can get past, though, because for me, if you're playing Horizon Zero Dawn thematically and not purely mechanically, if you're not sitting there approaching it as a game where you can tank certain things, but rather you're approaching it as an experience that you want to have a good time, and you approach it with the sense that, hey, you are both trying to get the glory, you are both trying to get that final call, but you don't want your fellow hunters to die. If you approach it thematically instead of mechanically, you can get past that, or at least I, I can get past that. The area where I still don't like the semi-cooperative, because for me, our group aren't jerks. We will play this more thematically, we have played it more thematically, and so that sense of the things you could do to tank the experience hasn't actually been an issue so much as a thing that can happen. But the thing I don't like is I don't like that final strike. I hate final strike in board games, and I really don't like it here as well. The idea that someone can sit there and try to slowly take down a hunter, but I sit there and I plant a trap, and boom, it goes blows up, and I get all the reward because I did two damage out of eight. That is something that I don't love, and it incentivizes players to not start something that they can't finish because somebody else will take over the job for them. And there are things that mitigate around that. There's the aspect of parts that you can damage and some small stuff, but they, they only partially mitigate against that core problem of the final strike being rewarded, so don't start a job that you can't finish, which effectively means power yourself up as much as possible and hope that you can do everything you need in one turn and if you can't weigh up how much you care about the overall thematic experience versus the idea that you are trying to win this thematic experience and so more so the final strike concept as opposed to the general semi-cooperative nature is a bigger problem for me in the game which again this is why i tried the cooperative mode hoping that it would give me the experience that i wanted instead and the cooperative mode is just too easy it just that doesn't feel like a challenge at all it doesn't feel like i have a chance of realistically dying in the cooperative mode it just feels like hey i'm gonna go ahead and play this game and do my things and we'll work together we'll kill the enemies ta-da we won there's no sense of tension the sense of tension and the sense of decision space that you have to engage in in this semi-cooperative experience it feels like it was balanced around the mode that i don't like as much and the mode that i do like is um not balanced around that Hence, again, my excitement for Forbidden West, because I believe Forbidden West is being designed purely as a cooperative experience, and ideally, I don't know the rest of it at all, but we'll see. We'll see where it goes. Let's, let's make this about Horizon Zero Dawn's talk about Forbidden West at the end. And so those are the things I don't like about the experience, which are, well, notable. As far as things I can see others not liking, there are a bunch of other things that might make this a game that's not for you, even if these other things that bother me aren't issues for you. First of all, there's a lot of thematic twists in the game that aren't quirk quirks call them thematic quirks things like you know when you go ahead and kill an enemy if a range shot across the board you go ahead and pick up the thing the loot that they drop small stuff like that is present in the game a lot as you go through small little just thematic quirks that are just interesting as far as how they interact with the experience when an enemy is alert to your presence and when not so small things like that they're not a big deal to me at all but they could be things that just thematically get in the way of your experience I'll say that the game is just a hunt, which may or may not be a problem for you, but if you're someone who's a, a Horizon Zero Dawn fan, and you're expecting a larger series of what this game is, this takes the Horizon Zero Dawn experience of being out in the wild, being monster, being, being mindful of patrol paths, while you take down various creatures and gather more stuff to level up. It condenses some aspects of Horizon Zero Dawn, but not the full experience, so make sure you know that before you decide if this game is right for you or not. 
And then a big one that is worth touching upon is the core box variety is on the low end. The core box is not an inexpensive game, and there's only one core hunt to go on. If you get expansions, I think a lot of the things in the game, I think are variety, have enough variety to them. The market decks, the characters, I think there are things in the game that have enough variety to them, that if you have a handful of more hunts, you have a whole lot more gameplay here. But if you are someone that is a fan of the game, I don't think the core box is enough. I think the core box is enough to, to whet your appetite, to give you that intro hunt. But the problem is, you have to either go on the same hunt again and again and again. And sure, there's variety to the way the cards come out, but not a ton of variety. And so the core box variety might be a problem for you, even if you are a fan of the experience. Which brings me to final thoughts for Horizon Zero Dawn. And Horizon Zero Dawn, for me, is a game that I... I was conflicted on what to rate this one, but I think I'm going to rate it as the experience it is and not the experience I want it to be. For me, this is a 3 out of 5. This is a 3 out of 5 that it's a good game that I've enjoyed my time with it, and I was more high on it at first, and I, I kept on holding, out, holding out hope that the cooperative mode might give me more of the experience, but ultimately it's an experience that by now I think I am... I am both very much a fan of the things that it does well, while ultimately feeling that the core gameplay of Horizon Zero Dawn is one that... Again, a semi-cooperative mode has Final Strike, which I just hate so much in games, plus it has all these semi-cooperative problems, and the cooperative mode just isn't the challenge at all, and so for me, Horizon Zero Dawn is a 3 out of 5. It is fine. I've had fun with it. I've continued to have fun with it. I mean, I, I've played this multiple times and enjoyed the process of leveling up my characters. But for me, I think Horizon Zero Dawn to me is more about the promise of what this game could be. A game that, since I first played this, I was always hoping that Steamforge games would do Forbidden West and hopefully tackle some of the things that were there along the way because I both like, I like what this game is promising me. I just don't like the end result of what I'm actually playing quite as much as I like the potential promise of it. So for me, it's a three out of five. A lot of things that are done really well. A lot of things I want to see more fleshed out and return to. But the core experience as is is not one I was I would recommend as much, unless you're into like fan homebrew stuff. I believe there are people out there who have ha have built cards and stuff for cooperative versions of this game that are more challenging, and that could totally change my opinion. But I just I didn't play any of the fan homebrew stuff, so I cannot comment on that. In any case, as far as other game recommendations, if you're looking for a game that offers you, and these are actually both video game recommendations as well, but if you're looking for a game that's going to give you that sense of limited resources and that sense of progression, there's a lot more, a lot more tension in a fully cooperative experience, I highly recommend Resident Evil the board game from Steamforge Games, specifically the third one in the series, which is called Resident Evil the board game instead of Resident Evil 2 or 3. I think that is the best one in the series, the most recent in the series, and I, I really enjoy and recommend that game. I think it gives you all the tension that Horizon Zero Dawn was hoping to give you, but in an actually balanced cooperative gameplay with a lot of progression, lots of unlocks, and a ton of variety to it, I really recommend Resident Evil the board game. And if you're looking for a game that gives you that stealth-based aspect of what Horizon Zero Dawn is doing, but does so with a lot more tools baked into it, a lot more mitigation, a lot more, a lot more interesting things happening within a stealth-based system, Assassin's Creed the board game, if in Triton you are, is an absolutely amazing experience that I highly recommend. It'll give you a lot of tension as you try to balance uh, playing through the game, trying to stay under the radar when you need to be, but being sure to pop up and uh, take care of enemies when you need to as well. In any case, then until next time, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. Hope you enjoyed this video, and as always, I hope you have a good one.